Hey everyone, so I get a lot of questions from YouTube and from my patients in my chiropractic practice. And the question is, how tennis elbow happens? How does it happen? Well, it's very interesting because we know from some research that's more recent that it happens a little bit differently than we used to think it happens. So let me answer that question for, for you. So first of all, tennis elbow is when we're getting pain on the outside of our elbow here, okay? So typically the pain is gonna be right here around this bony knob, which is called the lateral epicondyle of the elbow, and then pain through the backside of your forearm here. We used to call it lateral epicondylitis, but now doctors usually should call it lateral epicondylopathy because the science behind the pain has changed a little bit. So first of all, let me just show you again up here on the poster where you're gonna feel pain. So this is looking right here at the back of your forearm and you'll see that little X, that pink one right there, that shows a common trigger point. In other words, an area of bundled up muscle fibers or what you'd call a knot that can become painful. And then this darker green area is where a lot of the pain will be. So what causes this? Well. The actions that cause it are overuse in wrist extension, and that's this motion here, okay? So you do this motion and a lot of normal things that you do every day. The other thing that can cause it is rapid eccentric overload, which means when your wrist is actually moving in the opposite way with a force applied that it injures these muscles. These muscles are the ones that are involved in tennis elbow because these muscles are the ones that lift your wrists and your fingers upwards this way. So an easy way to test on yourself if these muscles are involved is just to hold your wrist in that position and then push down against a little resistance. If you have tennis elbow, it's probably gonna bother you some in this area of your wrist. So if we look from an anatomical and a science perspective, in the first couple of days or the first few days after you injure your elbow in this region, you do get some inflammation. So that's what we would call tendinitis. Now, that's a lot more rare than we used, than we used to think. So the inflammatory process is really only present for a few days. And then what happens is you have tendon degeneration and a failed healing response. So during that portion, when this might become more chronic or it just doesn't feel like it's going away, there actually isn't any inflammatory cellular activity in this area. It's just a failed healing response in those tissues on the tendon. And so it continues to just wear away and wear away. And because it doesn't have a lot of vasculature in the area, it doesn't get a lot of blood flow. And if you don't have a lot of blood flow, it really affects the healing process. It takes longer to heal and it can be really stubborn. And that's why typically tennis elbow takes some treatment, maybe some bracing and at least some home exercises to get over. Let me show you a couple of reasons that are probably really common and maybe the reason why tennis elbow is bothering you. Number one, if you work at a desk or computer on a mouse and a keyboard, this puts your wrist into an extended position, okay? So just putting my hand here on the mouse, you can see that my wrist is elevated. Well, because my wrist is elevated, I've got some muscle activity in these extensor muscles. And then as I move my mouse around, they're even more active. So a lot of us use computers every day, so you can understand, uh, I can see how that could bother my elbow. The other one, and I'm not showing this really great on this computer because it's fairly flat, is those of us who use keyboards that are detached from our computer for using a desktop computer. Now typically, our wrists will fall a little bit like this and our fingers are elevated onto the keys. So this is why when you are younger and you learn typing, they want you to wring your wrists up because it's an occupational hazard to be in this position because of the prolonged wrist extension and how it can irritate your arm. 
So for corporate jobs and professionals, you can understand that may be a cause of it. The other common cause from a work standpoint might be using tools, and I have a hammer to show you that one. So if you look at me, and I'm gonna swing this hammer, let's just say going straight down here, I do get wrist extension right here, and then I'm coming down with it. Now, if we're taking a larger swing or we're sitting from the side, my wrist also turns over into supination and pronation, and then you add the swing in it, boom, like that, and you get supination, pronation, and extension in there. So that can initially irritate it, and then you've got this failed healing response. It's really important before it goes on too long to make sure that you either try and rehab it yourself by doing some exercises, or you see a really good physical medicine provider like a chiropractor or a PT that can put you through some progressive rehab and treatment. I have some videos on YouTube. I'll link them here at the end here. You can also check out my channel because I have a lot of exercise videos for tennis elbow and for golfers elbow conditions on there that are really good and will help you rehab through it and get you feeling better. If you guys have any more questions about tennis elbow or anything else that I cover in my videos, feel free to ask them in the comments and we'll see you next time.